As the fall athletic season comes to a close, we take a look at two sports who had exciting seasons. Hello everyone, I'm Brooke Grimsley. And I'm Chris Davis. One of those sports is soccer, and man did they have a great season. They made it all the way to the Conference USA Tournament and were able to pull off some impressive wins. But their season got off to a little bit of a rocky start as USF proved to be quite the opponent. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. Middle Tennessee got off to their normal start. Very aggressive as Torrey Hawkins got a shot on goal, but was saved by Thordis Aikman. A few ticks later, MT gets another good look, but Gray Summer's shot is deflected off the goalie's hands and out of bounds. USF survives the early push and gets some shots of their own, but Kelsey Brower, the key to MT's defense, comes up big near the end of the half. Moving into the second half, it is all USF. Olivia Chance takes a long range shot, easily fielded, but that would be the only easy one. A little lapse by the MT defense allows Letitia Skeet to get a great look and puts it right by Brower. A few minutes later, Kate Loy looks like she's going for the cross, but the ball is on goal and Brower is unable to wrangle it in and the nail in the coffin. Olivia Chance gets a breakaway with a side dribble and puts the ball in the open net, nothing but net, and USF takes the win, three to nothing. Now the Blue Raiders' next opponent was an all too familiar foe. Mid-state rival Austin P traveled up from the Queen City hoping to steal away a win on Middle's home turf. Early in the first half off the corner kick, Molly Anderdahl gets it to Tori Hawkins. Anderdahl gets it back and makes a nice pass to Grace Summers. Summer makes another pass to Peyton McClellan, who gets the goal, but it's called off sides. Moments later off the goal kick, Summer ends up with the ball and quickly passes to Angie Lai. Lai makes a long pass to McClellan, who gets upended by Austin Pease, Nikki Philippone, while making the save, score still at zero. In the fifth minute, Hawkins makes a great tackle and passes to Grace Summers just outside of the box. She fights off two defenders and takes a shot at the net, but misses high. Coach Aston Roden shown encouraging his players to keep attacking. Later in the half, Hawkins with the ball, she gets it to Cameron Cox. Cox gets it to Jorgensen down the sideline. She tries to make a cross to a rushing McCollum from the opposite side, but the attack is once again stopped by Philippone. Nearing halftime, Anderdahl lines up a corner kick and sends it into the box. Jorgensen is there with the header and it goes in. MTSU takes the lead one to nothing. Let's take another look as the ball goes over the goalie and deflects off two defenders into the net. Now late in the second half, scores still one to nothing for the Blue Raiders. Tori Hawkins takes the free kick and sends it towards the box. Kelsey Roberts is there with a header and it's just out of reach of Katie Amig and goes in above her head making it 2 to nothing MT. Take another look as the ball just edges past the goalkeeper's hands into the goal. That would end up being the final as the Blue Raiders win 2 to 0 and improve 2 2 and 1 on the season. Now into some conference play, the games that really count. The Miners came into this matchup 6 2 and 1 ready to notch another win. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. UTEP's Mackenzie German gets the ball off the throw in and makes a cross to the box to Sydney Rapp. But the shot is saved by MT's Kelsey Brower. She is a brick wall back there. On the other hand, Amali Anderdahl makes a cross off a free kick. But the header from Angie Lai was just wide off the net and the score stays at zero. Now in the second half, Lai makes a beautiful cross but is stopped by UTEP's Sarah Dilling. UTEP's Taylor O'Hare makes a cross from the box that's stopped not once but twice by the Blue Raiders. Kelsey Brower is keeping the score at zero for both teams. Nearing the end of regulation, MT's Miranda Caballero booms this free kick into the opposing box that ends up with Angie Lai wide open but her shot ends up wide of the net once again. Mackenzie German dribbles the ball towards the MT net and makes a pass to Bree Barrario, who appears to be off sides. She gets the ball past Brower to Angie Kataya to put the ball in for the game winner. MT falls 3-5-1 on the season, dropping the first conference game of the season. After suffering three straight losses by a combined six points, the Blue Raiders look to get back on track against the UTSA Roadrunners. Now let's take a look at this game. In the early minutes, Emily Jorgensen is fighting for possession and passes it to Peyton McCollum, whose shot is blocked. UTSA's outlet pass lands deep in empty territory, but Miranda Cablero is there to prevent any scoring chance. 
After a pass by Tori Hawkins that finds Peyton McCollum in the open field, her shots get blocked again by a roadrunner defender. Midfielder Michaela Schmidt's pass gets deflected by Blue Raider Cameron Cox, but UTSA retains possession and Coella Neal finds the back of the net to put the roadrunners up one. A Kathy Thomas foul leads to a free kick by Anka Grottle, whose shot is easily saved by MT keeper Kelsey Brower. After a fight for possession, Anissa Munson finds Jenny Traumer free in Blue Raider territory, who beats Kelsey Brower to put UTSA up 2-0. Once again, Roadrunners are deep in Blue Raider territory, and Lizette Nino puts the game out of reach to put the final score at 3-0. Still ahead, win and they're in. Lose and the season is over. The Blue Raiders take on the Blazers in a must-win game and it's senior night. All next. The final home game of the year set up to be one of the most important games of the Blue Raiders season. That's right, Brooke. With their season on the line and their parents in the stands, the pressure was pretty high at Dean A. Hayes tracker, Track and Soccer Stadium. In addition to their season, these seniors had a lot to play for, including impressing their parents, many of whom were making their first trip down to Murfreesboro just to see their babies play. Early in the first, trying to get something going, number nine, Amali Anderdahl, through the defenders, dribbling up the field, past number 11, Courtney Gibson, off the foot, coulda, shoulda, woulda, nothing there. To the 32nd minute we go, still no score. UAB outside the 18 trying to move inside, puts up a shot right into the hands of Kelsey Brower. That's not going anywhere. There you see coach Aston Roden, 12th year as head coach of Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders go into the locker room, into the first, nil all. Second half action, Jorgensen throw in, header inside the box, sets up, but right to the goalie. We ain't leaving till somebody scores. You want a score? We'll give you a score. Number eight, Tori Hawkins with the setup. Oh my, Angie Lai, nothing but net. And the header, and it's in. There it is, Angie Lai. Let's take another look. Hawkins settles, lobs, header. Good! Middle takes the lead. Had some physical play. Here you see UAB's Key Adams falling to the ground. She's slow to get up, but just like Tay Swift, she... How much time's left? 35 seconds left to go. Last chance for the Blue Raiders to put the icing on the cake. Shot. Saved by the keep. Blue Raiders will be saved by the clock. They'll win it on senior night over UAB. One to nothing. Now before we take a look at the ceremony after the game, we sat down with the seniors to talk about their favorite moments, lessons, and greatest on and off the field memories. 